why would I advise a director to direct their own script? Because it is hard. And we have to solve <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> the JFK quote, I just completely blanked it. We don't we go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Hard. Like, yeah, writing your script is important for any first time director because mm. that that process from script to screen mm. well a is it's a it's a learning process and and if you write the script yourself and then transmute it into screen, that's when uh, you learn the most, yeah, and I feel like it catalyzes that learning, and you'd be a fool not to do it because otherwise you'd just be writing someone else's script and then if the film flops then you can be like the scapegoat like yeah, yeah the, the screen the, the script writer was a jerk mm -hmm. it's like you don't have that scapegoat if you wrote it yourself <laughs> there, there, there is not a, one reason why you should do it but it's very recommendable to do it because of the experience you'll get from it and uh, you gain a certain sensitivity to other people's script if later you have to direct that one where it just opens your eyes to like what works and what doesn't work on camera and why also. So it's it's a huge, huge Yeah, thing. no, it's also like in the writing process, you, you envision the ideas, you envision the shots, you actively think about like, I could write it like this and get this angle. I could maybe shoot it from that angle. And it really does, like as I was saying earlier, catalyze that learning of being able to uh, obtain images and uh, extract images from writing and put that into a, a very visual and audio orientated format like film. Um, yeah, I, I'd say it, it helps you uh, put that creativity in a, in a form where you can communicate it to other people. So you learn to, by writing, communicate your ideas, visual ideas to other people more easily than just if you sat around them and say, oh, I got a great idea for this, like we could sh shoot it like that. It's like if that's in the script and quite clearly, people will get the idea straight away and it's way more easy to mm -hmm. like, to do yeah. that, yeah. Writing a screenplay, I mean, is a lot more like clinical as opposed to writing uh, a novel or uh, some poetry. It's, it's clinical and structured. Mm. I think that's the, the two words, clinical and structured, because you really don't want to be dealing with too much bullshit on like as, as we were saying earlier you you write a film you get on set 50 billion things are happening at the same time your mm -hmm. mind's gone blank you're like i don't even know what we're filming today you take a look at the script and yeah the format is there for a reason it's very uh, friendly to just glance and, and understand what you're doing it's efficient extremely efficient and that's why like yeah it's industry standard to learn how to format a script properly and uh, and you'll find if you're submitting your script to to any professional uh, or anyone who would even consider themselves a professional within the industry and you send them a script that was like written almost as if prose on Microsoft Word that's mm. gonna go into the bin because it's only like so long that someone who's used to reading a proper screenplay format can look at that and that's just the, the truth. I'd, I'd say it's a lot like a partition of music. Mm. Like, you can look at a partition of music and follow it, but you can play it the way you want. Yeah, put some emotion to it. Except you don't have to fucking go through six years of music school to write one. <laughs> As but, I said, yeah. you can just look it up. Like, yeah, you can look up how to write a screenplay format without having to go to film school. Mm -hmm. uh, although film school will give you some good insight, but it's not that it's you need a PhD yeah, to learn the yeah. format. You can just go on YouTube, you can go on uh, anything and, and learn how to do it properly for free along with free writing software like Writers Duet, mm -hmm. uh, Celtex and then if you want Final Draft which people say is industry standard I think anything that's in the full correct format is industry standard uh, and you can work with it and, and that's the key about the formatting is that it makes it very efficient and easy to work with even when 50 billion things are happening uh, as, as I was saying earlier it's like it's like a poor man's Lego uh, building instruction kit where it's like yeah. you need to build this film and you just like you need to you read these yeah they follow yeah they become instructions but there's also words so 
you are left with building blocks but then it's like is it supposed to look like this i don't know and then that's the the you know the challenge of it is to build something that you don't know what's supposed to look like mm. but you have a rough idea of what it's like and be happy <laughs> that's the challenge yeah. be happy with the, what you built at the end yeah. and uh i'm not happy <laughs> I mean, we did speak a lot about formatting, but like there's, there are occasions, oh, I forgot the guy who wrote uh, Lethal Weapon, Shane Black. Mm. Shane Black's script for Lethal Weapon was like a short story novel, but he labeled it a script. Mm. Like it wasn't formatted properly. He sold it to studios. They lapped it up and as we all know, Lethal Weapon went on to have four sequels. You want to see crazy? I'll tell you. <laughs> Now that's a real badge, I'm a real cop, and this is a real fucking gun. But, I mean, firstly, it just shows like, like, yeah, as much as we'd like to stay true to the script writing format, like, there are exceptions to the rule, there will always be exceptions to the rule. Secondly, I think that particular instance was an exception to the rule because the story was so fucking strong. Mm. And, and it just goes to show with any film, even at the end, like Festin, for example, mm -hmm. like the story, the plot, like if they, they are solid, like the film could look like crap, sound like crap, the script could look like crap, all the actors and, and, and uh, crew members could look like crap, <laughs> like, yeah. and it'd still be a great film. I'm all netting silly, I'm at. Det har kæft, mand. Og når du siger det, Kasper, han er kræftet med at gå hele vejen fra Paris, det er en bror, mand. Nej, jeg er bare gået fra stationen af. Ja, en af de gode eksempler af et skript, som ser ud som et skript, men det er stadig godt, fordi det er historien. Og det er sådan, at der er en forskel mellem historien og linjerne, og linjerne, og linjerne, og det er selvfølgelig vores gode ven fra Star Wars, Lucas. Ja, ja. He writes scripts oh, really uh, poorly, right? Yeah, and the yeah. story is, is amazing and immersive. So that's one example of that, I'd say. But uh, I don't think all this writing is. No, no, no. But what's, it, the, what's it, the line it, from it, episode four? Is like. But we can't turn back. Fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is any greater than it was on Aquilae or Solus. And what there is is most likely directed towards a large scale assault. <laughs> And I thought, who talks like this, George? <laughs> and it was so hard. A lot of times, it's a true story. Harrison Ford, who plays the space pirate in the film, at one point threatened to tie George up and, and uh, make him say his own lines at gunpoint. <laughs> Star Wars, I also like, because it follows the generic like three-act structure. And learning these structures would be a, a boon to, to most filmmakers. But don't adhere to them, I'd say, especially when you're starting out. Because you you got the free pass of starting out, so you, you're allowed to experiment and make mistakes without it damaging your career. Honestly, if your story is faulty, it's as if you give a manual that is missing a piece, and therefore the whole thing will crumble at the end. Mm -hmm. So the story has to be rock solid. On top of that, you write a nice script, nice set of instructions, and then you hand it off, and you hope that they manage to do it. But yeah, if your story is faulty, then your set of instructions will be confusing, and then the result will be poor. But in your own opinion, yeah. what do you think makes a good story? A, a good story is a good human experience tale, you know, mm -hmm. recounted. So. I think, yeah, for me, I just like seeing stories that I haven't seen before. The last one that really, like, knocked my socks off, so to speak, in terms of uh, stories is Lesky German's filmography. So, like, it's hard to be a god. Mm. <laughs> Внизу его огромном доме замки дымил печь. И был он не на земле, а на другой планете, благородным доном в 17-м колене. Незаконным сыном местного языческого бога Гарана. Кто-то верил, кто-то не верил. Но опасались все. Like he has dialogue happening off screen. Like you don't see the characters, but like loads of even down to action like actions happening off screen there's still crazy stuff happening in front and you can see characters reaction but you can't even see what's happening and you have to wait for the camera to turn around and it just creates this complete immersion within the the scene is brilliant 
So how do you write? Do you say your, make yourself a coffee, put on your favorite slippers? So to me, I, I try to write as much as possible of like, I switch towards stories now, where I try to develop stories more than coming up with cool dialogue and things like that. So yeah, that's how I write now. But do well, you write consistently? No, I should. Yeah. I get like a little cup of coffee and usually it's like when I'm sleepy and I, that's my technique. That's sleepy, still dreamy, I, I go on and I write yeah. a lot and I, I just don't even look back at myself, I even skip bits, I just da -da 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 -da, and then I have like 15 pages instead of what I used to do before which was write one page in like four hours and I'm like yeah this page is perfect but then I've lost the train of thoughts and all my ideas and I'm just stuck with one page and I'll never go back to so now I just vomit draft I just 15 pages if there's like something I could write later I'll just skip it and continue to all the good bits because in the end when I reread it it doesn't need that those bits I skipped it's almost like natural it just mm -hmm. rolls through to only the best bits it's like when you're editing something you want to really like kill everything but only keep the best beats the the, the best bits mm -hmm. what about you i i don't know i'm still going through a weird phase of my writing right now like when i was writing on autumn comes i did it only at night mm. when i was about to fall asleep mm. and i forced myself so every night i'd be like even if i'm just writing one line like i need to write and so i managed to write like i can't remember how long it really took to write it took me a whole year to do the scripts mm. properly but that was because of revisions etc i can't write before going to sleep now like it's just impossible for me so i'm finding myself writing in the day and i'm writing it in my book pen and paper and on anything but screenwriting software mm. at the end of the year yeah i think one of the worst things you can do is write on your phone oh no i never i write notes yeah you can write notes but i feel like everybody do, does that now and it's it's just not organized, it's messy, and I feel like pen and paper, or actually like putting it in like a computer document, or taking your notes from your phone and then putting them on the document is a lot more usable than just the phone. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. But if you now I carry a, which I never used to do before, but now I have the, the notebook with pen, and if I'm in the train, I write on there, and it's something that happens because you, you're not able to delete a whole sentence or things like that so you just go along with it and because you don't interrupt your flow of thought you end up writing more and better mm -hmm. i think it's, it's the i feel like the letter from paul mm -hmm. paul he was like writing is actually editing like mm -hmm. writing isn't putting the words down onto the page it's actually rereading those words editing it ten, time, time and time again that's what writing is but, but you have to set yeah i agree and i think you have to separate when you write and when you edit because mm -hmm. otherwise you get caught in a loop where you're doing two jobs at once. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah I agree. You stop writing. Yeah. Or when you go, like, this is why I think I like writing with a pen and paper now is that mm -hmm. when I go on screenwriting software, because uh, it starts at the top of the page or it starts where you left off and you're like, oh, what did I write last time? Let me reread it. And then you reread it and you get put into the editing mindset. Mm. Whereas mm -hmm. like pen and paper, it's like, I can't be asked to read my fucking shitty handwriting yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. I'm just going to write more. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you, you get thrown a lot easier into the writing mindset. And then you somewhat have to set time aside to transfer what you wrote on paper or to, to uh, the, the screen onto, onto your software. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important uh, part because that's like an extra stage of editing that you'll do to the script. Mm -hmm. like, and that counts as an edit. And there's something crazy that happens with that edit because when you transfer what you wrote, you're like, did I really write that shit? I'm not going to transfer that. And as you're saying, you pick like so the best bits from what you wrote and that's what gets transferred over. And then in your mind, the editing begins where you actually reread it and then keep continuously uh, fine tune what you wrote until it's something that you feel is solid but it's yeah. also having like that objective mindset to see like what really works and what doesn't mm -hmm. and if you want to get really thrown into your subjective uh viewpoint of like oh, this is amazing this bit where she's eating a pie for 30 minutes because <laughs> she's mourning in ghost though 
I don't want to name drop the film. I love the film. I just, I made my own edit of it where I just removed that scene. And I was like, yeah, this is better. But then like in my film, I have that scene where they're just there, sat there for ages and like, who the fuck am I to talk? But, yeah. Cut it, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> what are you yeah, yeah. doing, dude? Yeah. You know, it's better to have a low budget version of your film filmed yeah. than uh, a high budget of the of the film not filmed. Mm. And then you apply that to what, what was his name? R.J. Chittens? Is it R.J. Chittens? Or is it R.J. Chittens Charles? Uh, the guy who was in a, a, the tale of a, mo uh, of a neighborhood movie superstar. It's a great documentary. And he, uh, he just makes tons of films feature length films big films with like action figures mm. he makes i don't want to say like they they have a, a love heart and soul in them yeah okay okay and it's brilliant it's so enjoyable to watch all the filmmaking rg magic happens right here this is one that stunt me in the only one really <clears throat> for my movie ace thunder ace this is the main one that's going to be doing all all my major stunts in my film and i got like different little faces i can put on this uh, uh character here like yeah he does like these films and then he shows them at his local cinema and the kids go and watch it and they love it but he's not he's definitely not Fair encumbered enough, yeah. by the budget and i'm just yeah. like there and, is always some somewhere but yeah but remember I, I always call them helicopter scenes you don't need helicopter scenes if you don't need a helicopter scene oh yeah like, you can cut but i feel yeah. like that's more for the producer i mean we can get a toy helicopter <laughs> my green yeah. screen like there's always ways around it, but yeah like yeah there's there's ways it depends on how important things are mm -hmm. like i just think if you put yourself limitations and you're realistic with the limitations you have like a lot of young filmmakers who did their first feature lab and it was a success like clerics and things like that yeah they put they wrote the script around the limitations of the thing it's now it's time to head over to atlantic drink some beers get ripped and hopefully get laid 179 paid a good man i so I, I agree i mean yeah but it's also like the realism of well no realism it's like the grounded mindset of the filmmaker mm. who doesn't want to make a marvel film as their first film they mm. don't want to go and make some mad crazy expensive like looking thing and uh, you get exceptions as uh you know the cyberpunk one and it's all like they use the blade runner effects it's a short film these two guys and then like they did uh oh uh, yeah, the thing yeah, they, the go around, yeah, they go around they go around the world It's like, yeah, it's better to, to make your film for a shoestring budget. With, even if it's shitty, it's better to make it than it is to wait and be like, oh, there's a helicopter scene for this and I need great VFX or a real life helicopter. Mm -hmm. Let me wait and try and get funding for this. Don't worry, the script will speak for itself. Go and try and get it made, man. Recommend reading Paddy Chayefsky's scripts. He's released them and he even wrote notes on them. And they're brilliant, brilliant, insightful. Uh, the Coen Brothers scripts are great. Mm. Um, Tarantino script because there's more information. Yeah, Tar Tarantino script is is brilliant. Yeah. Like, and the way he describes characters, I, I'll, I'll never forget this. And I actually steal it and use it a lot for a lot. But the beginning scene for Inglorious Bastards, where the guy's just like, he has an axe and he's just chopping up this this tree stump. It's like, yeah, he's been chopping this beast of a man, chops this worn out tree stump, 
and you don't know how long he's been chopping up the tree stump for. And it's like, you know, the, you have the whole like, and, and this is what I mean by like, you know, you get to Tantino's level, you can do it, but like, he's cheating it there. He's, mm-hmm. he's definitely involving some like, uh, li- literary techniques into the, the, the screenplay. It's not like, this man chops a tree stump though. He's very artistic, but it has a lot of information in it. Well, beast of a man. Yeah, yeah. That helps with casting directors. You sort of know who you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tree stump acting as a metaphor, the tree stump being France and, and mm-hmm. the, the axe and uh, its treatment is, is the axis forces on, on uh, and how it's been treating it. Um, and then, yeah, the, the script's written really brilliantly. It's a brilliant piece of writing. And the other script I really enjoy. Mm. Uh, that I read, Nolan's The Dark Knight. Three of a kind, let's do this. That's it, three guys? Two guys on the roof. Every guy gets a share, five shares is plenty. Six shares, don't forget the guy who playing the job. He thinks he can sit it out and still take a slice. I know why they call him the Joker. So why do they call him the Joker? I heard he wears makeup. Makeup? Yeah, to scare people, you know, war paint. Like, I don't know what I was expecting. I was like, yeah, yeah I like the Dark Knight. I don't like no, let's, let's give it a read, why not? I, sometimes I go into that, I read like the first few pages of the script and then tune out. But this script, like, I remember reading it, I was just like, page, 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 yeah, page. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even mean to be here this long, like, fuck, page, 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 page. It was just really fucking well written. And that's, that's like signs of a good script. I mean, that's what they say as well, like in, in, in screenwriting school, but it's like, the first 10 pages matter. Because after the first ten pages, the person's hooked. Regardless, of, like you get the first, you need a good first ten pages, mm-hmm. or a good first page as well. On top of that, mm. like apparently, when I'm saying a screenwriting school, like they find one spelling mistake, one grammatical error on the first page, that script's not being made, and it's like that's how cut it is. Mm. So it's it's very important to get your script formatted properly and having the correct. Grammar and, and uh, punctuation, punctuation, mm. grammarly. Cool. And also inspirations for writing. I don't even look at screen uh, screenwriters too much. I read their scripts from TV and other people like Richard Linklater and and uh, Edgar Wright's scripts uh, and John Carpenter's scripts. I read those. But the biggest inspiration for me for my writing is short stories, novels like from John Fonte. Uh, from Mikowski yeah. and from... Um, for me that inspires... Even, yeah, comic books, Jujito. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, comic books. Yeah, yeah, for me that inspires more of my writing, but screenwriting... Like, honestly, I don't know what inspires me. Just mm-hmm. like, I watch a good film and then a motivational video about a guy who wakes up at four in the morning and does 20 push-ups. And I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah, inspiration can come from my area. Mine is comic books. His is... People sweating on YouTube. Uh, Sweaty. I just sweat. Just sweat.